Hi, I'm Jenny Sauer. Good morning, everyone. So welcome to End User Tools presents Spotted Lanternfly Visual Data Collection. We're talking today about the nationwide visual data collection and it will be using the ArcGIS Field Maps application. I've had a poll up and I'm gonna give you just maybe a three, two, one countdown if you wanna voice your, um, your opinion, but the, the poll is on how you prepared to be here today and um, the options here on how you might have prepared for today include studying survey protocol for spotted lanternfly, maybe reviewing how to use the device you plan to use. There's an iPad basics course out there too if you want it. Um, possibly looking into the ArcGIS field maps application itself. It's new this year. There's a user guide. There's been some live training and there's a recorded 10 video series for you to, um, to use kind of in bite-sized pieces if you want. And then maybe you just might say, um, I'm here, aren't I? Come on, uh, Jenny, give us the training we need. And we will. Um, it's not going to be too difficult today to work through that. And a few of you also said other. I'm going to end that poll. And thank you so much for those who kind of added their little preparedness planning that they did. I see a lot of you took advantage of training that's out there, and that's great. That's the, really the first thing I want to share with you today. We're going to talk today about, um, as I mentioned on the outset, we're going to focus on the nationwide spotted lanternfly visual surveys, which only record data in states where there is no known presence. So there should be only negative records here. For states where there is a known presence, they have a separate map. I'll show you how to identify your map if you're in one of those states. I believe right now there are 12. So <coughs> sorry uh, for coughing in your ear. If you are in a state where there is a known presence, you would use a different map to record that data. And we will look at that briefly. Um, again, your spotted lanternfly multi-state coordinator is Matthew Travis. He's responsible for communicating that survey protocol and, um, and training as it comes out. He's the one that you would contact to say, we need some training on this topic, or maybe there was training, but we need some more. Um, so Matt's your person for all things survey related, the program itself. And he also was responsible for making sure that the, the fields and the, the data being collected was correct with cross-functional working groups and our data group. So being here will make everybody happy and should help reduce any kind of worry that you might have over using a new app a little bit and build some confidence if you have not used this um, field maps application before. So two quick resources I put in the chat box already. I'm going to show those to you. So first, we've got the mobile data collection tools web page. I would bookmark this and check it often. There's a lot of information here, and it's all going to support program data collection. Um, the top half of the main page is all document kind of oriented, and the bottom half is all video oriented. And some of you may have noticed the the training here today is being recorded. That will show up down here in the video gallery. I've just got to kind of process it and get it hosted, but it will show up right here too. So if you missed something, if I spoke too quickly, um, or if someone missed this training and you'd like to review it, it will show up down here. It, it gets categorized a little bit and it will show up under pest programs. And these are trainings that have happened so far this year. You can also always search here in the search box. Um, so a few things that I've already mentioned, this training events page. Some of you may have come to this training today this way, but this is where we list all scheduled training. And so you can see there's a few more for spotted lanternfly already kind of on the schedule, we'll see another nationwide training May 26th, and Otis has some training <coughs> scheduled as well. Um, so the, keep this website um, handy and have a look at that often. Um, just moving back to the main page, we also have under general training, we've got a user guide for field maps. Um, you may have noticed down here, there's a foundations category and field maps has, this is where you can find those 10 videos. Pest program specific training. 
also gives you a little specific little manual and quick reference for every spotted lantern fly app that's created by my team. And so you can see right now there's a lot in development for 2022. But the one we'll talk about today is sitting right here for you. The SLF Nationwide Visual has a little manual and a quick reference. And these have all kinds of screenshots and take you through step by step. So if for whatever reason I move a little fast, or if you want to, feel free to open that um, and follow along. The second link that I uh, kind of placed in that chat box is this training quiz link. And I'm totally fine with you opening this training quiz and taking it right along with me as I talk. Um, this is really just meant to kind of test your knowledge. And this third question down here asks for your email address. And if you type this in with care, you will get an automated email response that says you completed this training today. So sometimes supervisors like to see these things. I like to put this kind of stuff on my list of accomplishments every quarter. Maybe you have a little folder you like to put these things in, but type this in with care and you'll get that little response. It also tells me whether you're kind of listening to me and it it's developed in a way that it's not supposed to be hard. I really just want to know, did you hear what I said and are you following and are you going to be able to collect this data well? So those those two links are in the chat. Um, help me out, guys. If uh, if somebody needs them again, feel free to copy paste them right back in there again for me. Sometimes I miss the chat, as you've already noticed. I, <laughs> I'm just one person and sometimes I, I just don't see it. Um, so what are we going to talk about today? Well, we're going to talk a little bit about the new app, the Field Maps application. Um, we're going to talk about signing into that application, which requires you to know a URL. And there are two different URLs. This year we have, um, every year we create a training version of your map. And this year we have to host those training maps in a stage environment. So that's the training maps URL that we'll talk about how to make sure you're in the right spot when you sign into field maps. We'll overview that disconnected workflow. It's always a good review. We're gonna talk a little bit about nationwide versus state. Um, actually, we already have a little bit. Um, we'll look at that data form. I'm, I have my iPad right here and a little camera set up so I can show you what it looks like. And then just kind of hit on a few caution areas that we wanna be especially mindful of. So uh, let's just jump into it. I'm gonna turn my camera off so I don't distract myself. Um, and we're gonna talk a little bit about field maps. Um, for those of you who used Collector, the ArcGIS Collector application in the past, it's gonna seem very familiar. It looks, it looks pretty similar. Um, as we discussed, there is some support for you. If you wanna learn more about field maps, you can take that training and I would encourage you to do so. It's not gonna hurt you to, to review uh, things even if you are pretty sure you know how it works. Um, so just as a reminder that that training is all found um, is all found on that mobile data collection website for you. So um, check that out. Esri is the company that um, that makes these map these apps that we use out in the field often. And some of these here listed as old applications you might be familiar with. For instance, Collector. Um, so basically, the field maps application has been built upon the code or the scripting of Collector. So that's why it looks very much like Collector. And then the company is kind of pulling features or functions from these other four apps into it. So it will have the functionality and the look of Collector, but have a few more features. And it's still in development. So at this point, um, my team and user tools is really just focusing on status quo and making you users comfortable. We're keeping things very simple. We're trying to do the same as it, uh, the same kind of look and feel as last year. So there really should be a very gentle entry into field maps, especially if you've used Collector in the past. When you first open the field maps application, you'll get this little prompt to sign in. And you have two choices, sign in with ArcGIS online or sign in with ArcGIS Enterprise. And for PPQ users, all of our apps are housed or hosted in the enterprise portal. This is where our 
PII can go, where our sensitive data can be housed safely and, um, and securely. So we're always going to tap sign in with ArcGIS Enterprise. And this is where it gets maybe a little tricky because the first time you sign in, you will have to select specify a new URL and you will have to manually type that in with the keyboard. And then ever after it kind of holds, see up here, it holds track of that URL for you. And this is that enterprise URL where our official maps are held. Um, and so ever after you tap sign in with ArcGIS Enterprise and then you can just tap the URL as it's listed there for you. But the first time you're gonna have to specify and type that in for yourself. And this is where it gets into those two different kind of sign in options. So that URL that you type in, you may you may be good enough to recognize that that's this top one and it says MRP in the URL, maps.mrp.usda.gov forward slash ArcGIS. That is our official data collection enterprise portal. It is the USDA MRP managed portal. However, as I mentioned earlier, we also create a training version of every map. And these training maps are really out there so that you can practice, so you can fool around, so you can demonstrate things. Today, I'm going to use a training map to show you how this nationwide visual survey looks. Um, maybe you want to do an exercise with your crew and just kind of play around in the map and feel comfortable. We want you to be able to do that, but we do not want you doing that in an official data collection map. So we have another map copy of that. The training maps then would be for all of that play material. No official data should be collected in a training map. Official data should be collected in that official MRP site. So you could see maybe the difference here. That top one has MRP, but this bottom one here says maps-stg.mrp. So think of that as stage. And if you are assigned into this staging environment, all the maps here are training maps and practice. So really what you have to be mindful of is if you've been practicing or playing in a training map, sign back out. I'll show you what that looks like quickly today and sign into the official data collection enterprise portal. So only official data can be recorded in that official MRP URL and training data should stay in the training map. So that's a question on the quiz freebie there for you. Um, make sure that you're in the right one. Disconnected mode workflow. This workflow is probably pretty familiar to a lot of you. Um, the key takeaway really is that the field maps application was specifically designed to operate in disconnected mode, meaning well not connected to Wi Fi. And this is really excellent for those of us out in the field. Sometimes we're out in very rural areas and <laughs> and we can collect data come back to the office or sometimes even a hotel, connect back to Wi-Fi and then synchronize our data back to that hosted map. It takes a little bit of preparation in that we have to download a map area to use out in the field and then we can disconnect from Wi-Fi and collect that data. And there are videos supporting how to download that map area as well. So just a little reminder there that that is, um, that is a really great workflow for us to keep in mind and to prepare for and use. Which brings us to already the data form. This is a PPQ configured iPad. I use it for testing, so there's probably um, a lot of other apps here um, on it and some things that don't normally appear. But these this page of all of these survey applications should show up on your iPad if you have a PBQ configured iPad. If not, you should open a ticket with CECIT and make sure that configuration is corrected. Um, and so as with all apps, we are going to locate that field maps application and tap it to open it. Because I was signed in previously, it's pulling me all the way back into the last map I was using. So I'm going to hit back twice to get to my main maps page. And I'm pretty sure that I signed into the stage portal and I can tell you why. I see a bunch of uh, downloaded map areas here and you can see a, a real nice tip is the beginning of that title says training in all caps. The thumbnails all say training on them. 
And I see this group here, the PPQ End User Tools Training Group. This is where all of our training maps are shared to. And you can add yourself to this uh, training group. There is a job aid under on our webpage, the Mobile Data Collection Tools webpage, under the Field Maps section. There is a little um, job aid that will show you how to join this group or you can always ask for help and I can help you uh, join this group. But I'm just gonna open this group to show you what it looks like. You can see all of these maps are training versions. We have two SLF maps in here right now. One I will share with you today, the nationwide visual surveys. But I did wanna point out what it looks like, a state survey map. We've still got training here because we are in a training map officially. The official map, if I signed in, to the official MRP portal will not have training, but it will be titled similarly after that PPQ SLF and you see this is a Virginia version. So if you are one of those 12 states, you would see your state abbreviation there and that's how you would know that's your state map. Um, this map is still in testing right now. This is the first one out. Um, so we're not going to look at that yet today, but we will look at the nationwide one. Just going to go back once. Let's say you're unsure whether you're in stage and you need to enter official data. When in doubt, sign out. When in doubt, sign out. So do not enter official data in a training map. And uh, just to show you how to do that, you'll go to your profile up here, kind of scroll to the bottom here, and there we've got the option to sign out. And then that would start you back at the beginning and you would choose the official URL and sign back in. I'm not going to do that here today, but I am going to open. I have previously downloaded. Um, you can see it says there are offline areas here, the nationwide visual survey map. So I'm going to go ahead and go in and open that downloaded map. And you can see I've been playing around a little bit. I've got some points here on the map already. A couple things along the top that I want to point out. Um, this is your sync button, and I'm going to tap that to show you Auto sync should be off or disabled. This toggle switch turns that on or off. And we do not want auto sync enabled for the reason that auto sync will make decisions on when to connect and sync that data. And the number one reason why a sync doesn't work or doesn't go through or you have a partial sync is a poor Wi Fi connection. So you want to do that data sync when you are assured of a reliable Wi Fi connection. So we want you to do that manually, which would mean tapping that icon here and then tapping sync. As you can see, I don't have any pending edits at the moment, but that's where those would be listed. Then we have a layer icon. And if I open that, you should see the same thing in the official in the official data collection map. In this case, these are all layers labeled with training. So we know we're in the training or the stage portal. And we do have a reference layer from last year on visual surveys that is defaulted to off, but can be turned on. Um, I'm gonna turn it on, but we won't see anything. I'm kind of in a weird spot. I'm in Colorado, so we're not gonna see anything here. And then we have a markup layer that's defaulted to off. Uh, more on that in just a second. There is a search feature here that may be helpful, um, most likely for maybe locating a previous visual survey. You could type, try typing things in if it's enabled. And then this overflow or three dot menu has a few more cool things. The legend may be helpful to you. And the legend will show you the, um, the meaning behind the symbology on the map for all layers that are currently visible. Now, remember, we turned on that reference layer, so we have that layer listed as well. And there's a few more we can scroll up and see. I'm going to exit out of that. And then finally, the markup layer. And the markup layer is. Um, is a cool new feature to field maps and it really is just a layer that you can mark up so if i open that you can see i actually have a few markings on the map um, the caveat or the warning behind the markup layer is there are two number one it is not an official data collection layer and number two it resides on your device and less shared so private to your device not official for data collection 
and private to your device. And so you can add a point, um, you can add things by just hitting that plus button. You, I can think of quite a few options maybe that might be helpful to you. Um, <coughs> I'm just gonna mute one of you here, okay? Um, for instance, this little point here, I've labeled as a good lunch spot. Um, you might be able to think of a lot more useful ways to use this markup layer, but I would defer to your supervisor for use here. Um, another option, I kind of drew a little area on the map and I marked it for um, maybe some trapping. Um, it's a public access trail and just kind of describe the area. Maybe I should look there um, later. So that's, that's just some ideas on how you might use that markup layer. But remember that it is not for official data entry. Don't record any comments here. Make sure that goes in the main data form. And it's just living in your device unless you share. And I'm sitting in my basement, so I am still connected to Wi-Fi just to make sure this demo goes well. Um, but this share button here will allow you to either take a screenshot of what you see on, on your screen or the entire markup layer. And while connected to Wi-Fi, it will allow you to upload that layer to the enterprise portal as well. So that would be a way to share. But again, keep in mind those warnings and make sure that you work with your supervisor. I would love to hear if you find a cool way of using this markup layer, but that is, um, that's the gist of the markup layer. I'm gonna tap on the screen. Recording data in this nationwide visual survey if you want to add data it's pretty simple you hit the add button and there's an add button here down at the bottom right so we tap that button and we're presented with the first question which is asking us to identify the host and so as you can see the slf nationwide visual surveys are symbolized on the map based on the host and so your first question is, what is the host? And again, you would fill this out based on survey protocol. I don't know survey protocol, so I'm just gonna choose, um, let's go Let's go with our Alanthus there. And you can see the point was immediately placed right on top of where I'm located. For the sake of this demo, I'm gonna pull that away and place it away so you can see it better. Um, and there, there we are, that's our point. And then the data form opens here to the left. And you can see there are some default entries. The agency is defaulted. If you tap the field, you can change that to anything on the list. I'm gonna leave it alone and hit done. There are required fields indicated by these stars or the asterisk. And there are some that are not required that do not have an asterisk. So <laughs> well, I'm gonna go ahead and fill this out quickly. Although, um, missing a lot of probably survey protocol. I'm just going to label these as tests. You can see it pulled in the host name for me. I'm going to leave those blank and I'm going to put test in the comments. Now, uh, you're probably already saying, don't forget the date, Jenny, but I want to point something out because this submit button is actually active already. And so it seems as if I could go ahead and submit this point. I'm going to hit submit. And it's it's going to fail. And the nice thing about this is it failed, but it gave me a message. It says one of these attributes or one of these fields failed. And then it gave me a nice red marking here that this required field is missing. Um, if you're in a long form and you tap view, it will pull that up and see it pulled it up a little um, to make sure that it's in view for you to see what's missing. Um, the date is one that I tend to fat finger a lot, so I, I like to show this to you. If you tap that field, it opens up a calendar view for you. It is restricted to this year. If I go back to December, for instance, if I can, come on, there we go. You can see it's not really selectable except for the last day of December. So it doesn't really allow you to go outside of this year. Let's say um, I accidentally was, you know, kind of moving around and tapped a, a date other than today. I can bring it right back to today by tapping today. And then I can tap again and close that calendar view. And I recommend this because I have a tendency to scroll and accidentally tap calendar dates. So once you have today, go ahead and close that up. And then we'll go back to the top and I always recommend you review your data one more time. Just give it your eyeballs one more time and make sure that you've entered everything correctly. And now we can hit submit and it submits the point. 
And that's really the gist of a visual survey. Let's say we need to edit one. Um, well, we've just entered the data for this uh, location, this visual survey, and so it's remained selected. And that's indicated by this kind of blue halo around it. But let's say for the sake of the demo, I'm gonna close that data form. Uh, let's say we need to edit a, a different point. For whatever reason, the information entered there um, was incorrect or I, I came to find that there was actually an egg mass or something there. Um, so you just tap and select the point as I have, and you'll get that um, select point is selected with that blue halo around. And in order to edit this data form, it's gonna show up in a view only. And to open editing, we can either tap this pencil here at the bottom or scroll up and find that pencil again where it says edit and tap that. And now all of the fields are open to editing. Um, I'm going to say, let, let's say it was actually not a transport vehicle. It was a, um, actually a grape. And you can see that changed the symbol on the map right away. And so that's how you would edit that field. Now, I would always take a moment to be to carefully consider the entire data form um, while editing. And then you're going to go ahead and hit submit for that edit. And there we go. I'm going to close that data field form and show you here at the top something's changed with our sync button. These used to just be two arrows, one coming in and one going out. And now the arrow going out has this little dot. So this is a little indicator that we do have edits waiting to go out on living on our device in my downloaded map area. And this is where at the end of the day when you reconnect back to Wi Fi, which I am now you would go ahead and tap that. You can see the two edits that we did together today are listed here and you are able to review them and, cha and make changes if needed. And this is where you would tap sync now to go ahead and sync. Caution areas. Some of these we've already covered. In fact, we've covered all of them, but let's talk about it one more time. The two URLs that you want to pay very close attention to, um, I've labeled one as real and one as training. One is official, the MRP the USDA MRP um, portal or enterprise URL is for official data only. And be very careful that training data lives only in a training map and that official data does not go vice versa into the training map. Um, use that disconnect connected data collection workflow. It is how the app was designed and it's, it makes things convenient for you out in the field. The submit button used to be grayed out in collector. That was a collector feature. Now it will give you messaging and help you complete required fields. And the reason why it would fail is an incomplete required field or also um, if your GPS is not meeting that requirement. I'm meeting it even in the basement, which is pretty good um, for basement life. Be careful with your data collection. I, I think this goes without saying and you're all pros out there, but it's just a good reminder when you complete a form, always to go back and have a look at it again. Um, be sure that you're doing that daily data sync when you're working offline. We recommend that first thing in the morning and last thing at night. And again, that markup layer is a new feature. Remember, it is not an official data collection layer and it lives on your device. So remember that unless you share it, it really is just kind of like writing in your diary. Some, some places where you might be able to get some help uh, we talked about a few things today, but there could be all kinds of questions that you have. Anything related to the program itself could be directed to Matthew Travis. Um, iPad issues, if you, if for instance, if you forget your passcode or, or um, somehow it's not working, or if that field maps app isn't there, open a ticket with CEC IT. Um, portal access, getting access to this sign in. Um, or the field maps application itself. Um, you want to kind of follow this hierarchy. You start with your supervisor, but your supervisor also has a couple of options there below to kind of reach a little further. All things training, go back to the mobile data collections tools webpage often and look for them there. Um, but all of that being said, come to me or to my team anytime as well. Um, that's kind of the summary. I want to direct you back to that quiz because it's your best bet of making sure that we covered the things that are involved in the visual survey for nationwide um, surveys for SLF and gives you that email uh, confirmation that you completed this course. 
Um, so we've covered all these kind of objectives that we talked about at the start. We talked about the new app, the um, portals that you need to be sure you're signed into, disconnected workflow, we talked about nationwide surveys, and we had a look at what those titles look like if you're going to be in a state that's collecting data that way. We looked at the data form and we reviewed caution areas, so we I think we hit those pretty well. But all that said, I always want to take accountability a little bit and say if there's any questions, I'm going to stay on another 10 minutes or so, and if you have any questions, if you feel comfortable, you're welcome to do any of the following. You can raise your hand. You can go ahead and unmute and just ask it if there's something you want to see again. Um, or you're also welcome to put that in the chat box. Of course, reach out to me anytime. This is my information. But um, if you have any questions at all or would like to see anything again, just speak up or, or let me know. Well, I'm going to go ahead and end this training then for today. And congratulations to you who have completed that quiz and have done so well. Again, any questions, survey protocols, Matt, Travis, but you can reach out to me for anything and I will do my best to direct you to the answers if I don't know them. So have a great rest of your day, everyone, and thank you so much for attending and your, and your excellent questions.